you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. This video will demonstrate an overview of the Unleashed Multi-Site Manager Dashboard. We'll demonstrate the Dashboard menu, the Devices menu, and the Task menu of backing up and restoring Unleashed configurations. After setting up your Unleashed Multi-Site Manager on your server, you'll browse to the URL that is assigned to your system. In our case, we're using a sandbox, but it'll be preferenced by UMM and then some other information out here. So I would put in my username and password, and then I would click Login. And this brings me to the main dashboard. So let's take a quick look at what we have here. You'll see right at the top that we have a little warning. So if I click on that, it says that my UMM system has insufficient licenses. In this case, it applies to the zone director. But if your licenses are running low, then you're going to get some kind of a warning. So over on the right, we have the time. We have the number of alarms. And if, and if I click on that alarms, they'll show up down here. And we can filter on the severity of those. Right now, we have all. This is my username. There's a help menu here. And I just want to point out that if I go to help, it will bring up an online Ruckus Unleashed Multi-Site Manager user guide. This is very helpful when you're going through and learning how to monitor and configure. So we'll close that. So across the dashboard, we see that we have, in this case, we have, we have two zone director networks and we have eight unleashed networks. So if I click on that too, you'll see that this is my zone directors. If I go back to that dashboard and click on my Unleashed, you'll see that that takes me into my devices and this lists the various Unleashed networks that I have. So for example, if you're using Unleashed and you've got 100 networks, you're going to have 100 different networks underneath here. So let's go back to the dashboard. This gives me the total access points in all the networks, the total switches, the total AP client counts, and over here, I have the AP Client OS. So this is filtered on all the groups. And notice here that we have an auto refresh of 10 minutes, 20 or 30, or disable. You can select the time period from 12, 24, 7, or 3 months. And now I'm going to click on groups. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about groups later and how you create them. But for example, if I go to the Iwani Art Group, you'll notice that that changes. Now I have just the AP client OSs for that particular network. So you'll see those AP clients over here. You'll see that I have three access points and one switch. If I went to another group, for example, if I go to Tony's home here, uh, he's got 14 clients and different AP client OSs over here. So that's a way of slicing and dicing the group. So we'll go back to the all groups here. And I also just want to point out here that we have severity is show all or medium and high or high only. So, for example, we're only showing high, but if I clicked on show all, here you see the event list of all the various things that are happening. If I click on medium, you'll notice that we don't have any on that and also we don't have any on high. So the next tab that we want to go to is our device tab. So we'll click on devices. The device page of the web interface displays information about devices managed by the Unleashed Multi-Site Manager software. These devices include zone director controllers, ICX switches, and Unleashed APs. So we have two major parts in this screen. We have the group functions here, and then we have the list of devices over here. So these are the Unleashed networks managed by Unleashed Multi-Site Manager. So if I had 50 networks, you would see 50 entries over here. And if I scroll down, you'll see that we have a total of 11 entries at this point in time. And UMM is managing each of these networks, and I'll demonstrate how we do this. So one of the things I could do is under the configuration table over here, I can bring up the rows and the columns of the things that I want to show. So for example, if I wanted to show latitude and longitude, I could click that and add those to that. And if I scroll to the right on this bar, you can see now that we have location, latitude, and longitude that is entered. One important feature here is that it does show the software version. So you'll see that, for example, we have 200.6, we have 200.8, we have 200.9. So you have different software versions on here. We also show the license consumption as well over here. If I scroll back, and let's say that we want to pick one particular network. If I click on this network, you notice that when I click on this network, it highlights edit, edit WLAN and these device control functions up here. So for example, if I wanted to edit that Unleashed network, I could give it a new name. I could put in the location. I could put in GPS coordinates and so forth. We'll cancel on that. I could edit the WLANs. So for example, I could select which WLANs. In this case, there's two WLANs associated with that network. I could edit those. 
I could change the access VLAN. I could put in a new passphrase if I wanted to. So I can modify all of that information right from my UMM. If I wanted to block, I could do that. If I wanted to back up and restore, for example, if this is a configuration that I want to use on another art studio that I bring up, I, I can back that configuration up and then I can restore it in the future if, if for some reason that network goes away or if I want to reuse it again. So I'll cancel on that. I can upgrade. So for example, if I had a 200.7 version of software and I wanted to schedule an upgrade, I could go ahead and do that. And I could select that firmware, the, the version that I wanted to. So you notice here that we have the latest firmware. But if I was on 200.7 and I wanted to up, upgrade to 200.8 or 200.9, I could go ahead and do that. And I could schedule that. So I could click on schedule. Then I could set a date to do that. So we'll cancel on that. So one of the other things I want to point out here is the this under the member count, this lists the number of APs that we have. So for example, in my Awani Art Unleashed, I have a total of three APs that are connected. There are zero pending and there are zero disconnected. The connection status in the blue shows me what the connection status here is. So for example, the red means disconnected, the blue means that it's connected. Now if I double click on the name of the network, it's going to take me directly to the login screen for that network. So for example, I'm going to click on Awani Yard Unleashed. It's going to open up a new window and that brings me right to that particular dashboard for that particular network. This looks exactly like it does is if I connected to the Unleashed network and used a browser and typed in unleashedruckuswireless.com and logged in. So I'm now I'm on that particular network. So for example, you see that we have the three access points here that we listed before, and you would go through that network and you can monitor and can edit this network exactly like you can from the Unleashed multi-site manager. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. One of the things I didn't mention is over right now we're listed as group, but I could do a list. So this just puts them in random order or I could do group. Under my grouping under the devices, I could click on this to refresh. So let's talk a little bit about groups and managing groups. So as you can see here, wireless network, I have several groups under the wireless network. For example, I have a group called Awani Art and I have that particular Unleashed network in there. So let's say in this Awani art group, I had several other networks that I wanted to add in here. Maybe I had two other art studios in the neighboring counties. If I click on the edit symbol here, I can add additional networks in there. So this is gonna give me all the networks I had. So if I had 100 networks in here, you're gonna see all 100 show up. So for example, if I wanted to add this one, and that's in here. I could go ahead and do that. And I click OK. And it'll say they've been added. So now in this particular group, I've added those three networks. By the same token, I could remove those just by unticking them. And that'll take them out of the group as well. If I want to create a new group, I would click on the plus sign. And let's say that we want to create a new group. And we want to call this Yosemite Art. And I click on the Iwani Art Studio. And then let's say, for example, these were some other Unleashed Networks that represented art studios or whatever. I could go ahead and click on those. And then I could add those to that. So I've created the group. Now, if I went into Yosemite Art, you'll see that those three networks are put in there. So let's say, for example, if you had a school district and you had junior high and you had high school and you had elementary school, you could set up a group for junior high, for high school and for elementary or whatever other business that you have. Could be in geographic locations or whatever. If I wanted to get rid of that group, I could just click on the X and say, are you sure you will not be able to recover from the selected group? Yes, I want to delete that group. So you're deleting the group, but you're not deleting the network out of the devices. One other thing here, if I picked a particular group like the Awani Art here, and what you see showing up at the bottom here now is just the access points or the ICX switches. So in this case, there's three APs. There's one ICX switch. I have one alarm down here, and this would be unique only to this network. If I went back up to my wireless networks, what you're going to see down here is a summation of all the access points, all the switches, and all the alarms. So we have wireless networks, which include my zone director and my unleashed networks, and then we have another group that is switches. So I can manage those switches from UMM. One thing I want to point out is, though, is I can't move switches from here to my wireless networks or vice versa. I can't move APs or switches from my wireless networks to the switch group. 
So we'll click back on the wireless networks. Next, I want to talk about backing up and restoring configuration files. You can create configuration backup files for all the devices managed by the software to recover configuration settings in the event of a device failure. The backup files can be created for single or multiple devices. Ruckus strongly recommends that you periodically backup the settings of your zone director, unleashed devices, and ICX switches to make sure that you can easily recover the configuration settings if they ever become corrupted. So to perform a backup, you would select the network or particular networks that you want to back up. So I'm going to go into my Awani Art and I'm going to select that particular network by tagging it and I would click on Backup and Restore. So in this case I want to do a backup. It gives me a task name and I can append that task name with a name such as the word Art. So I'll know that it goes to the Art Studio. I'll click on Schedule Backup. I can do the frequency. It can be daily, weekly, or monthly. So let's pick a month and we'll say the first day of the month and then we can pick a time if we want to. So let's say 10 o'clock and I'm going to click on OK. And then I'll say the task backup art has been created. To view the task status, go to the task. OK. So now if I go into my task menu, here is the one that we've just created. So this was the backup. Notice that under the status, it says that it's not started yet. So it'll give you the task name, the task type, the schedule, the status, the configuration, when it was created, and who it was created by. You'll notice here that we have some previous tasks that were done. So for example, this backup was successful, and it gives at the bottom, it gives the device name, the backup file name, the model name, and the version number of software, and the backup time and the status. If for some reason you want to delete that, you could click on that, and you could go ahead and hit delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Yep. We'll go ahead and delete it, so it is now deleted. The UMM enables you also to restore device settings easily from a backup file. You have the option to perform a full restore, a failover restore, or a policy level restore to another device. Before performing a restore procedure for the device, make sure that you have at least one backup file that you can use to restore the device settings. Restoring device settings from a backup file overwrites the current settings with those obtained in the backup file. So if I want to perform a restore, and let's say we go back to my Awani Art Unleashed Network, I would click on that, and I would click on Backup and Restore, and in this case, I'm going to select Restore. I'm going to give it a task name, and I'll pin the word Art on it. So you can do a full restore, or a failover restore, or a policy restore. A full restore overwrites all existing device settings, including the IP address, system name, username, and password. A policy restore just restores the policies, such as the ACL settings that you might have on a particular WLAN. So you'll select the Unleashed Restore option, and in this case, it has to be one that's already been backed up. So the one I created earlier hasn't been backed up yet. So you'd pick a configuration file. You could restore now, or you could schedule a time for that. So we've scheduled July 22nd, and then you could click OK. And that'll say that task restore has been created. OK, if I go back to my task list, you'll see now that I have a restore that's been set up. So I have a backup and I have a restore. If I want to delete that, I could just tag that and go ahead and delete that for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'll go ahead and delete my backup file as well. So as you can see, setting up backup and restore configurations is very easy to do. Thank you.